All right, let's do a couple more videos here from MathPace1088. Oh dear, look at this deer jumping through the air. Cool. Uh, this is hunting season here in Pennsylvania where I'm recording this. And I know we have some students who like to uh, go hunting. Uh, did you catch my mistake in the last video? I caught it after I stopped the video and I'm not gonna go back and redo it, but maybe you caught it. I did not read my handwriting correctly. This was minus seven X and I read that as a two. Did you see that? Sloppy handwriting. <laughs> and then I ended up adding two X, which meant I would end up with a fraction. So this is actually not the same problem that you have in your pace. When in your pace, there was a problem that looked like this, but obviously as we continue, we would have added seven X and gotten 9x instead of 4x. So uh, good job if you caught that. If not, it just maybe this reassures you that even teachers make mistakes. And sometimes it's our handwriting that's the problem. It's not that we don't understand the concept, okay? So let's be careful. I'm gonna erase this one and get it out of the way. We're gonna look at another type of problem. What is three squared? Three to the second power. Did you say six? No. When you have something to a power, it means time the base times itself. So that would actually give me nine, okay? To, um, if I had x squared equals 25 and I wanted to figure out what x is, what I have to do is the square root of both sides. And so the square root of x squared is x. The x pops out, the square root of 25 is five, okay? So that's a pretty easy concept. It wants you kind of catch on to it. If it's new, it might take a little getting used to. So x squared equals 64, what would x be? It's not 32, okay? It's not half. It's what number times itself would equal 64, and of course the answer is eight. All right, so those are easy. In the pace, when we are here on pages eight through 11, they throw some more challenging problems at us. Let's look at a problem like this, and this actually is one of the ones from your pace, all right? Hopefully it's one of the tough ones, and if you can work through this with me, <clears throat> then we'll actually have one of your math problems done for this page, all right? Here we go. I'm gonna draw a line through the equals, and uh, first thing I want to do is get rid of the x squared term on the right. I want to have both of them on the same side of the equation. So since I have plus 3x, I want to get rid of it by subtracting 3x squared. I should have said x squared. So that's gone. And this would give me 4x squared minus 15 equals 49. Okay? <clears throat> Let me make sure I didn't read my handwriting wrong, seven. We have a exchange student here from an African country and I know she writes her sevens with a little line through the middle like that. Maybe I should get in the habit of doing that. It would make it easier to read it, okay? And she also does a little like thing like that on her ones. Okay, so seven X minus three X is four X squared. So now the next step is we're gonna add 15 to both sides. Okay, let's see what we get. Four, carry the one, 64. So four X squared equals 64. So we have two more steps actually. Number one, we have to get rid of the four, so we'll divide. And now I get X squared equals 16. And then I'm not gonna do the last step for you, okay? You do the square root of both sides, and you can finish that one. Let's jump over here to this problem. We have a fraction. Sometimes fractions look a little intimidating, but this isn't gonna to be too bad. Let's subtract the seven from both sides. 19 minus seven is 12. <laughs> And we have x squared over three equals 12. How do we get rid of this three? Since we have this divided by three, we're gonna do the opposite operation, which would be multiply. 
So if I multiply by three, then that will cancel, but I'll do the same thing on that side. So x squared equals 36. And again, you can finish that by doing the square root of both sides. Don't do 18, okay? It's not 18. Think about what squared means. Very similar problem. Let's walk through this one real quick. Add the 20. See, now I'm making my ones look like sevens. I can't do those. I'm just going to do that. There we go. So 21. So we'll have 3x squared over 4 equals 48. Uh-oh, what do I do with this 4? All right. Um, I need to multiply both sides by 4. And then that'll cancel, and I'll have 3x squared equals, and I'll let you finish the math. And then the last step is divide, well, second to the last step. Divide by the 3, and then you'll have a number that you can do the square root. Okay? So far, they give us problems that you always will get a number that you can do the square root of it and get an actual number. And then they want you to, on several of them, um, I think they tell you when, but they want you to plug it back in and check your work, okay? And those, those type of problems should work out then. All right, I'll stop the video here and we'll do a few more.